Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. As you are probably aware, the Blood and Sand DLC dropped yesterday, and guess what we're building with today? Yep, this is my first build with the Blood and Sand DLC, and I can say for sure that this DLC is very different from most of the others, and kind of forces you to change your building process a little bit. There are also some interesting little tricks and features of certain items in this DLC, which I may cover in another video regarding the items here. I'm not sure if that's something you guys would want to see, so just let me know. Regarding today's build, however, the Blood and Sand DLC is designed for building fighting arenas. However, seeing as my last build on this channel was an arena, pretty poor timing on my part, I decided instead upon a castle. You guys really seemed to like my last castle build and I thought that using these new DLC pieces we could create something even better. Today we are in the desert just north of Cannibal's Rest, on a large ridge against the desert cliffs. This is where we'll be building the castle. The castle will be facing out to the water, with walls on the north and south side of the castle to protect it from attackers on the flank. There is also a flat expanse in front of the castle, though considerably below it. We'll have a way to defend this area when the build is finished, though this area is fairly low risk, as an attacking army would be set up in the open, in full view of the castle's superior positioning. So without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, we'll start with the base plate. I'll set up the main foundations of the castle in a very simple square, eventually adding a room at the back of the base plate. The Blood and Sand DLC has two alternate foundation pieces, one using a sort of dark clean brick, and the other being that same brick covered in sand. I'll be using the sand covered brick to denote the entranceway into the castle. The idea is to have a pathway between both defensive walls that allows for access to the castle, so that mounted cavalry and infantry units can easily switch sides if need be. Next I started on the defensive walls. These walls will each be two foundations thick, with a round tower on the water facing side of each wall. The tower will be made from a two tier circular formation, and I'll again be using these sandy foundations to show where the gate will sit. I'll build the walls with foundations up four tiles high to match the height of the gate, covering the top of the gate with arena ceilings. I'll then set up fences and crenellated walls atop the defensive wall. The fences will sit above support buttress columns, with the crenellated walls sitting above the gaps between the buttresses, allowing for the pouring of hot oil onto attackers. Unfortunately, the Arena DLC doesn't have many different building pieces, including sloped sides. However, the stairs are a solid block unlike most other stairs, which means it can be used in the place of sloped sides formations to create a tiered slope, which works well for the buttresses. These stairs however proved to be problematic within the tower. I instead had to use reinforced stone stairs and wedges to create stairs up to the top of the tower.
Finally, within the tower itself, I used a single curved ceiling piece to create the roof. The Arena DLC also doesn't have any sloped roof pieces, lending itself much better to flat roofs. Therefore, I used these curved ceiling pieces and wedges to create a flat roof above the tower, then finishing off the roof with fence pieces. I don't usually make flat roofs like this, but I actually really like how they look with this DLC. I did the same structure on the other side to finish off the defensive walls, placing buttresses on the northern and southern sides of the towers to add extra support and close the gaps between the walls and the castle itself. Next, I started to build up the walls of the castle. I wanted the castle to have two distinct sections on either side of the sandy pathway, with any visitors having to come through the throne room. I built the walls of the castle up by four tiles to match the height of the gateway at the entrance point. I decided each floor was going to be two tiles high, so I separated the floors and rooms according to the blueprint. My first mistake here was not creating the rooms with the appropriate curved ceiling pieces first. I assumed these pieces sat flush with the ceilings, but they instead replaced the ceiling, thus it made adding the curved accents later a bit of a pain. I built up both sides of the castle, intending to later connect the two sides together with walkways above the sandy path, extending from one side to the other. I eventually decided to instead create three floors on the side closest to the water, shrinking down the size of the rooms to just take up the area at the front of the castle. Speaking of which, the front side of the castle will also have two balcony areas, one as a small dining area for the resident monarchs of the castle on the ground floor, and another just above that area on the first floor for general recreation. I used the arena stairs to connect each floor on both sides, which requires solid foundations to mount upon. As I said earlier, the arena stairs are more of a solid block than usual stairs, so you have to use a solid foundation to put them on. On the top floor, I would also later have to add access to the roof and stairs down to the ground the castle sits on. The rooms upstairs would become the armories, so having access to the ground will help defend the walls and the castle itself. The roof access will also allow access to the top of the barracks, which will serve as a defensive platform, as you will see later on. On the ground floor at the front of the castle is also a side access door for servant staff, which will allow access to the workshop and the kitchen area. Again you'll see this a bit better later. For now though, let's go ahead and get the construction of the castle done.
Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. Approaching from the south, the walls of the castle will slow down any attacking forces, allowing archers to shoot down at enemy forces and soldiers to work the siege cauldrons on the machiolations. Entering the sandy pathway, the walkways work well to add depth to the build. Entering the gateway on the left, the throne room is of a modest size, where the monarchs can reside to carry out their daily duties. There are also desks in front of the monarchs for various advisors. Upstairs above the throne room we have two side offices for the advisors and a main office for the king. You can see here how the curved ceilings really add a lot to the build, they are easily the best thing about this DLC and really improve what would otherwise be very basic, kind of boring rooms. Heading across the walkway and into the other side of the castle, we're on the first floor with many different options of places to go. Firstly, let's head upstairs to the armoury. Firstly, on the north side we have the soldier armoury, where all the field combat infantry can arm up and fight. You can cross between the two armories through a door on the south of this room. The next room is the Archer and Trebuchet Soldier Armory, which has plenty of bows, arrows and trebuchet rocks. Heading outside and up to the top of the armoury via the stairs, we reach the trebuchet platforms. This is where soldiers can fire down on massed armies on the plateau below the castle. Heading back onto the roof and down the back stairs, this leads up straight back to the southern entrance. 
if we head further down and into the servant's side door, we end up on the workshop on the ground floor. This is where all the arms for the soldiers are made, along with various items and furniture for the castle. Across the hall from the workshop is the kitchen, which of course serves food. With access to plenty of amenities and workstations, this is the perfect size kitchen for a castle like this. Between the kitchen and the workshop we can access the dining area outside. This is a nice little area where the monarchs can eat dinner and take in the views of the surrounding desert. Heading up to the first floor, we now end up on the other side of the corridor that we did before, which has access to the walkways to other sides of the castle. The floor has two bedrooms, with one being a nice guest bedroom, and the other being a more luxurious bedroom for the monarchs. This floor also has access to the first floor balcony above the dining area, which also allows for a nice view across the desert. And there we have it, a desert castle just north of Cannibal's Rest, using the brand new Blood and Sand DLC. Thanks for watching, this DLC is great fun to use, but also kind of forces you to build in a different way, though I do like it. If you've enjoyed this video leave a like, and let me know in the comments below if you have any future video suggestions, and if you'd like to see that video I mentioned earlier regarding building with this DLC. Don't forget to join the fun on our Discord through the link in the description, and if you'd like to support the future of this channel, the link to my Patreon is also in the description below, with various tiers and rewards including special Discord roles, sneak peeks at new videos before anybody else, your name at the end of videos and more. On that note, a thanks to our patrons Sammy, Doomshade and Dawnfox. If you're new here, feel free to check out the rest of the content on the channel, there are plenty more Conan Exiles videos coming every Wednesday and Sunday, so if you like what you see, subscribe and turn on post notifications to be the first to be notified when I go live on Twitch, to be the first to see the next video and to join us on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Again thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.